In this video tutorial, we are going to create the Blazor diagramming application that you see on your screen. The app uses MindFusion diagramming component to present a simple node list with shapes, which users can drag and drop onto the diagram area. Users can also create shapes with mouse drag and draw links between nodes. We create a new project in Visual Studio. We choose the type Blazor Web App. It's important that you choose Auto as the interactive render mode, which includes both server and WebAssembly modes. We don't need HTTPS for this project. As you see, the solution has a server and a client project. We will add the diagramming package from NuGet to the client side. We don't need it at the server. We search for it in the NuGet Package Manager. Here it is. Let's add it. Once done, we see that the Package Manager offers us to install an upgrade to the ASP.NET Core WebAssembly. Let's do that. Time to add a new Razor component. Again, only to the client project. This is the component that will render the diagram. We continue building our component. First, we need to specify that the render mode is Interactive WebAssembly. This is a very important step. Then we import some namespaces for the diagram, and we also need System Reflection and MAUI graphics. Now, we add the HTML syntax to create the diagram node list view and the diagram area. We place them in a div element, which has the layout of a grid. The grid has two columns. One is 200 pixels wide, and the other is one fraction of the remaining space, e.g., it takes it all. The height of the grid is the height of the viewport minus 5.5 times the font size of the root element, which is the Razor component. Now we start writing the code of the component. We declare three variables, the node list view, the diagram view, and the diagram, which is a different object than its view. We need to initialize those variables. The onAfterRender method seems like a good place to do it. The diagram instance is a property of the diagram view. We set its bounds to be a big rectangle. The size of the diagram element is different than the size of the diagram view. When the diagram is big and the view is small, the diagram view renders the scroll bars. Then, we specify two properties of the node list view. The first is the size of the icons, which represent the nodes in it that the user drags. The second is the default node size, which is the size of the newly created nodes that are added to the diagram when the user drops the icon. We now add three shapes to the node list. Shapes are added with the add node method. There we add a shape and a label for it. The shape can use all properties available for the shape node class or the class which instance it is. The library creates, through drag and drop, a shape identical to the shape that we have added to the node list view. We specify some beautiful brush for the interior of the node, and a nice stroke for the border. Let's test our project now. We are not ready yet, but with what we have now, we should be able to see a pretty well-functioning app. We add the diagram component to the home page in the server project. Let's run the app now. Here's the page. We can create nodes with drag and drop. When we try to connect them, the links are rather ugly. Let's change that. We also need a darker background for the diagram. Let's check the online documentation.
As you see, the Diagram class has lots of members and you can specify all sorts of customizations on your diagram. We use the Back Brush property to specify the background and we also use a few settings for the links through the Diagram Link Style property. These are Stroke and Stroke Thickness as well as Head Stroke and Head Stroke Thickness. Now, our diagram application looks really lovely and we can create the nodes from the list with drag and drop. You can create standard nodes with mouse drag on the diagram area. Those can be customized as well. And this is all for this video tutorial. Thank you for watching and thank you for your interest in MindFusion Developer Tools.